Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally, finally bringing you my sugar cookie recipe. I've got all the ingredients behind me. Um, I'm a little like intimidated by this process because the only other baking video I've ever done is the uh, scone video that I did. Uh, but I'm pretty confident in these cookies, and so I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. This recipe is so stinking easy. If you usually buy sugar cookie dough pre-made to do with your kids, but it's full of chemicals and you don't really wanna do that this year, this recipe, I swear to you, is almost as easy as using the mix. I mean, it's not as easy as slice and bake, but it's still really, really easy. And yeah, I'm just really glad that you're here. So before we get started, let me just let you guys know, I am not a, uh, how shall I say this? I am not a chef. Um, I cook for my family and sugar cookies are a long-standing tradition in my house. I love making sugar cookies at Christmas time. I love eating sugar cookies at Christmas time. My son found this recipe online. I loved it because you didn't have to chill the dough and it also seemed just maybe too good to be true. I was like, how can it be this easy? And you can rework the dough, which you can't do with a lot of sugar cookie recipes or they come out tough and just on and on it goes. So whether you are a seasoned baker who does very complicated sugar cookies and you're looking for something a little easier this year, or if you've never made sugar cookies from scratch, this is absolutely the recipe for you. Now, this is not my recipe, okay? I got this on the internet. So the um, I wanna give credit where credit's due. It is from inkatrinaskitchen.com. And actually, the <laughs> I wrote it on this card because I had it printed out. It was ridiculous and it was splattered and it was a complete disaster. So I wrote it on this cute little card. My mom bought me this recipe book a couple years ago and I think it's so cute. It's got Mickey on it, but I haven't put any recipes in it yet. So this will actually be the first little recipe card that will go in there. Um, but look, and it's got Mickey on the back. So let's get started. Let's make some sugar cookies and um, it's really gonna be fun. Don't worry, I promise we're gonna have fun. Okay, so this is literally all you need for this recipe. Are you guys ready? One cup of butter, baking powder, vanilla extract, almond extract if you have it, but don't stress if you don't because I've made them with the almond extract and without. Some people don't like that flavor, so you don't have to put that in there. And flour and sugar. That's literally it. So one, two, three, four, five, six ingredients. You're gonna wanna have your cookie cutters ready to go. Uh, I don't know, I think I always, these are kind of a mess, but I always love doing this big um, mitten at Christmas is fun. Um, I've got a little elf here that we could do. What else do I have? Um, there's a little Santa hat that's super fun. I think I have, oh yeah, where's my Christmas tree? I love this Christmas tree. Now you're gonna roll these out a little on the thicker side. So I like these big kind of chunky, um, cookie cutters for this recipe. Also, anytime you're decorating cookies, I like them to be bigger. I don't know, that just feels more fun to me. <laughs> now, I use these sill pats whenever I do baking. Um, you could also do parchment paper or you could spray your pans in advance, but I found these are just really easy and the cookies always slide right off. You can get these on Amazon. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in those. And because I have a convection oven, I have to use these flat uh, cookie sheets, but just any cookie sheets you have are fine. And then of course, you're going to want to have your mixer. This is my KitchenAid mixer that my mother bought the year that I was born. So this mixer is 50 years old. The only thing we've had to replace on it is this little thing right here, which was easy to order off the KitchenAid website. And I have had to order a few new um, accessories like this paddle. I just bought new because they do tend to get like the ceramic gets chipped, but you know, I mean, come on for 50 years old, not bad at all. And then I've already got my oven preheated. Um, it's 350 is what it calls for, but we're, it preheats to 325 because it's convection. And yes, this is an older oven. Someday I'm gonna get a new oven, but it's just not in the cards this year. So that's okay. So we will make do with what we've got. Okay, so basically just like with any sugar cookie recipe, you're always going to mix your butter and sugar first. So it's a little bit um, cold, quite honestly, especially for Atlanta. Have you guys been having colder than unusual weather? Uh, although we get cold, I'm always telling people, we do get cold in Atlanta. People think we don't get cold. We do, we get cold. So you're gonna put your 
butter and sugar in here. Of course, you're gonna wanna make sure you've washed your hands really well before you start this. I already did that, uh, especially now, but always when you're cooking. So we've got our one cup of butter, which is two sticks. Now I am using salted butter, which means I'm not gonna add the additional salt that the recipe calls for. But if you, um, you really should use unsalted butter, but uh, I don't have any. <laughs> okay, next up we are going to add our sugar and we are going to add one cup of granulated white sugar, just the easiest thing in the world. Easy peasy. Do, do, do. All right, and we've added our one cup of sugar. Now this part is super important and it actually said it in the recipe, which I appreciated. You need to cream the butter and sugar and a mistake a lot of people make is they don't understand that that takes a lot of time. Like you can't cream butter and sugar in two seconds. You have to do it at least two minutes and this recipe actually says to do it for three minutes. So let's cream our butter and sugar. And while that's doing that, I forgot you also need an egg. I left that out of the ingredient list. Ha, sorry. Now I always crack my egg into a smaller bowl first, and you wanna do that so that in case you get any shell in or anything like that, you want that to go into the smaller bowl where it's, where it's uh, you know really easy to get out instead of going into your dough, which would be gross. Okay, so you, I can give you a visual. Here's what you're going for. It really does look really creamy. Um, if I were to give it just another top, you can kind of see it's almost got like, see where it's almost like got ridges to it. But if you set your timer for three minutes, you can't go wrong. That will be plenty of time. Okay, so now I've got my egg and I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna beat it. I'm just gonna kinda lightly beat it, I guess is what they call it. But just to kind of break up the yolk a little bit, I'm gonna add that. And I'm also gonna add my extracts. And this calls for one teaspoon. Is that correct? I believe that's right. Do, do, do. Yep, one teaspoon vanilla. Where's my teaspoon? So, oh, this is new vanilla. I haven't even opened this yet. Oh, that's exciting. We go through a lot of vanilla this time of year. That's another big thing. Make sure you have done your grocery shopping, especially this year. I think a lot of stores are gonna run out of things cause you know, 2020 and everything. So we've got one teaspoon of vanilla, spilled some on the counter, who cares? When you're alone in your kitchen, who's to know? That was my Julia Childs impersonation. Um, and then we've got our almond extract. Again, you can totally leave this out. Some kids don't like the taste of almond extract. I really like it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add it. But you could either do like one and a half teaspoons of the vanilla. Don't, don't get too fussy with it. Okay, we're gonna mix those in. That makes me so happy. It already smells like Christmas. Isn't that crazy? That's mixed in. So now we're gonna assemble our dry ingredients. So what we're gonna need is three cups of flour. Now technically you're supposed to spoon flour into your cup instead of scooping because when you scoop flour, you tend to use too much because it kind of condenses it, if that makes sense. So you're supposed to actually spoon it in. I'm doing it this way for you guys, but I have to tell you, I'm not usually very particular about it, but that's okay. So we're gonna do one cup of flour and you're just gonna go like that and then just sort of scrape the top. There we go, one. And then another cup of flour. It calls for three cups of flour total. By the way, I always make a total disaster when I cook. I could never have like a cooking show. I mean, I suppose I could if I had like a staff if you want to be really particular, I even have a tool that is that you can use for this. Ta-da! Two cups of flour. And three cups of flour. I usually double this recipe. Um, I didn't this time because it's just for you guys. And I wanted to make quick work of it. You can refrigerate this dough, but you wanna make sure you pull it out about 10 minutes before you're ready 
to do the cutouts because you don't want this dough to be cold. You know, normal sugar cookie recipes, they ask you to chill the dough and it's kind of a pain because you're all excited to bake cookies and you want to do it, right? You don't want to have to chill the dough for 24 hours before you can make cookies. So that's one of the reasons I love this recipe. But if you wanted to double it, save yourself some time, maybe do a batch now and then do a batch closer to Christmas, you can stick it in the refrigerator. I'm not sure how long it's good for the in the refrigerator, a while. I'll find out and I'll put it right here on the bottom. Okay, three cups of flour, done. What's next? In our wet ingredients, we need two teaspoons of baking powder. Now, if you do not bake a lot, you are gonna wanna buy new baking powder. What did it say, two teaspoons? I don't know that I can talk and do this at the same time. Yes, two teaspoons. You are gonna wanna buy fresh baking powder before you start cooking for the holidays. Like if you only cook at Christmas and your baking powder's been sitting in there opened since last Christmas, just throw it away and buy new baking powder. It, it just, it, you're putting so much time and effort into it and if your baking powder isn't fresh, it will absolutely ruin your baked goods. So don't even mess with it. Now, if you're someone who bakes all the time, this is less of an issue obviously, but if you only bake at the holidays, throw out your baking powder and buy fresh at the beginning of the season. Um, okay, we're gonna omit the salt. Remember, because we used salted butter, so that's fine. And that's it, our dry ingredients are done. Now, you don't have to sift your dry ingredients, but I learned this years ago. I think it was Martha Stewart. I like to sift my dry ingredients. I have a sifter, it's a pain in the neck. It's a pain in the neck to use. It's a pain in the neck to clean. If you have a whisk, whisk, um, you can just take your whisk and do this. And you kind of achieve the same thing. I mean, obviously, if it's a, if it's a very fussy, fragile recipe, which this is not, um, you're gonna wanna actually use a sifter, but this is a shortcut that I, I really do think I learned this on uh, Martha Stewart Living when she had her show on PBS like one million years ago when Jesus was a baby. Uh, and Martha Stewart was also a baby. Martha Stewart and Jesus, so similar. Uh, anyway, so she's a whisk, much easier. All right, now we are going to slowly incorporate, let's clean up our mess. Good, good chefs clean as they go. I am not a good chef. Oh, I'm gonna leave this out. Okay, so now we're going to slowly incorporate our wet ingredients in, or our dry ingredients into our wet ingredients. Before I turn this on and you can't hear me, one thing to know about this recipe is this dough is going to be very stiff. If you don't have a KitchenAid, if you have a smaller mixer, um, it might actually bind up your mixer. So if that's the case, take it out and just do it by hand. Get a little bit of water on your hands and you can knead the, the rest of the ingredients in by hand, no problem. Someday I'm gonna get one of those really cool things that goes up like this. They make them for KitchenAid. And that way you can incorporate your dry ingredients a little bit easier, but you know, it's fine. And if you guys ever wondered why you do this, try not doing it and see what happens. My mom has this really fun story about when she and my oldest son baked cookies for when I got home from having my twins. She was staying with him in the hospital and um, Jack turned on the mixer and mom had dumped all the dry ingredients in and flour went all over the kitchen. And she said they both, now keep in mind, my son was three, just turned three. He turned three 10 days before my twins were born. So yes, I had three children that were all three and under. It was a lot of fun, but it actually was a lot of fun. It was also quite exhausting. Anyway, if you don't do it a little bit at a time, it's not like you ruin anything. It's just that flour will go all over your kitchen. And you'll make a mess. See how thick that is? Like it really, let's see if I can dump this in. How talented am I? There we go. Um, my mixer is fine, but if you didn't have a KitchenAid, see, like we're gonna need our spatula in there. It's really thick. There we go. All right, so we've got the dough all incorporated. I'm just gonna take that out of there. At this point, you should probably taste the dough to make sure you did it right. Okay. Oh my God, we're so good, you guys. But here is our dough. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna actually roll it out onto one of the sill pads. I haven't ever done it this way, but um, I read it like yesterday. <laughs> 
So why not try something that I just read about yesterday, today in a video? It's very on brand. Okay, let's go. For these cookies, you want the dough to be really thick. Um, it's just the way that it is. They don't rise as much as some other sugar cookie dough recipes do. So you want the dough to be really thick. I'm gonna do both of my cookie sheets at the same time. Does that look like about a quarter of an inch? So let's do all Christmas trees. If you do all the same thing in one batch, you'll find that your cooking times are more um, even that way. It's trash everywhere, because of course. So we're gonna cut out our Christmas trees. Oh, so pretty. It's cold outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe. And I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree. Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for you and me. The snow is falling down, and the storm is on its way. But as long as you're around, everything will be okay. Cause all I want to do okay. is... I've got those popped in the oven and those are going to cook for six to eight minutes. Now, what you don't wanna do is overcook these cookies. So I'm going to set them for seven minutes and then I'm gonna check them. Eight minutes is usually almost exactly right. Uh, they will continue to cook a little bit while they're cooling. You do not want them to brown and that's true of any sugar cookie recipe. Okay, so these are done and I'm gonna pull these out of the oven. Um, I'm going to pull out, of course, my pot holders. This is what we've got. Ah, they're so pretty. All right, you guys stay right there for me. I'm going to go get your brothers. Let's get these guys out, our little hats. Now, if you don't have a convection oven, you probably can't uh, do multiple batches at once. That's okay. Um, it just would have taken me a little bit more time. But see how they're not browned at all? Ah. Uh. If you are a really, really fussy baker as far as like your decorating and stuff, that might bother you. It doesn't bother me. And once these are iced and we get the um, really beautiful green sugar on there, you're not even going to notice. And these, same thing. I mean, people who are super fussy about the decorating part, I'm more fussy about the taste and the eating part. Um, but when I decorate these, we're going to do this part in white and we're going to do this part in red and we're going to do this part in white. And that will make sense later when we come back and decorate our cookies. Okay. So it is like, oh, so very much later. <laughs> um, we've run errands. We got, uh, groceries in. I had to do a bunch of drop-offs of things. I do, I will comment. This has nothing to do with the cookies, but I had almost all contactless, transactions today at FedEx, at Chick-fil-A, um, the grocery delivery, uh, Kohl's I had to go, that wasn't really contactless, but I did an Amazon return at Kohl's. Really good, like people wore masks, people were very compliant. It's just kind of nice to see, but it got very cold. We had a cold front move in, so I'm now wearing a sweater because um, in my kitchen, it's just burr cold. I tried to turn the heat up, but Anyway, it didn't work. So I have our bowl out. I'm going to grab one egg. Uh, you, Royal icing is one of those things. You can look up recipes for royal icing. You'll find them lots of different places. It's very basic. It's egg white and powdered sugar. And the consistency is different kind of depending on the day. I've been making it for so long, I don't really go buy a recipe. You might want to. So just Google royal icing and you'll see everything you need to know. Um, I probably, if I were doing enough, like for the entire family, I would do, um, two egg whites and two cups of powdered sugar. Sometimes you can add a splash of milk. It's really, you want the consistency to be about that of, uh, glue. So I'm going to divide this egg out and I'm going to show you how. Hold on. Okay. You ready? Here we go. Hopefully I'll do this correctly. We're going to crack that egg. And we're just gonna go like this. Now, if you had something where you wanted to use the yolk, you could, I don't, so sadly, it's just gonna go in the garbage. But a lot of the time, I would use that for something else. Now I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay, now we're just gonna take one cup of powdered sugar. And 
go. I always have tons of powdered sugar on hand this time of year. We make a lot of things that require powdered sugar. So, you know, staples that keep, you might as well stock up again, 2020, because you never know what they're going to be out of. And there's just a lot that is out even in normal years as we get close to the holidays, but certainly right now. So one cup of that and our egg white. Now, if I were doing a larger batch, I would probably do this in the mixer, but since I'm just doing a little bit and it's just to kind of show you guys how I decorate the cookies, I'm just gonna stir it with a spoon. See, very exciting and complicated. <laughs> you need to have a degree from the Cordon Bleu in France to be able to do this. I'm just kidding. So yeah, you're just gonna stir it up so that's a little bit too soupy for me. I like it to be like a glaze, but let's go with, you know, obviously it depends on um, the size of your egg yolk. You guys can tell I'm starting to get tired. <laughs> it's been a long day. Like I've gotten a ton done and I'm really, really grateful, but this is my last thing and then I'm gonna try to edit this video and get it up for you guys for tomorrow morning because you guys have been screaming for this video. So do you see how I'm not really measuring? I'm just adding the right amount of powdered sugar to get to that kind of glue-like consistency, but it's not, um, it's not too, too thin. So I'm gonna add just a splash of vanilla just to give it a tiny, tiny little bit. When I say splash, like not even, maybe a little bit more than that, because I don't want to change the color. And my wonderful shipped delivery driver, Leah, who has been doing my deliveries now pretty consistently. Um, I can smell that vanilla. It was so great to get me red sprinkles. All right, I'm gonna put you guys to where you can see and we are gonna decorate some cookies. Hold on. Okay, now what I've done, just so we don't make a huge mess uh, with kids, is I just put a paper towel underneath because this stuff is very, very sticky. And let's do a tree first, because those are all gonna be one color. We'll even do, oh, see, I was just able to take that off. We're gonna start with this tree. And it's, it's another, let's see. I just kind of paint it on. You can also um, dip them in there if you want, but you know, you don't want it to be too thick because you do want it to dry. And I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do the sprinkles. There's really no way to get away with this without it being really, really messy. So you want it more like a glaze instead of like a thick frosting, okay? At least that's how we like them. I don't know how you like them in your family. And then I've got my green sprinkles. And obviously here, you could go as heavy or as light as you wanted um, to make these look festive. Like you could stop right now and it would just be like a light coating. Or if you wanna go for the drama, you could do it like this. You could also do some of the white on here just to add a little bit of dimension to it. As you guys know, people go cuckoo bananas with cookie decorating. I don't, I like just one color Shake off the excess. Again, it's on your paper towel. And look how pretty that cookie comes out. Just absolutely gorgeous. Now this next one I'm gonna show you guys is, I'm gonna have to take the lid off of this. This cookie cutter is one of my favorites. And that is these little Santa hats. So they just look like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna coat them in the royal icing. And then we're actually gonna do two different colors because we're just being oh so creative. Do, 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 do. So now I'm gonna do my uh, red first and we're gonna do the red just right in the little center section. Now you could, you know, people do complicated things where they flood the, I mean, you know, there's no end of YouTube channels that show you how to do this. I am not that YouTube channel. <laughs> We're just gonna shake off the excess. Now you could stop right there, right? And it looks really cute and it looks like a Santa hat, but because I wanna be a little bit extra, we're gonna add some white. And if some white gets in the red, I mean, who cares, right? There you go. 
and shake that off that way and that way. And look how cute that one came out. You've got a really cute little Santa hat. Now we only have one more step and that is to let them dry. And then once they're completely dry, I will come back and I will make myself a cup of tea and we will have a Christmas cookie and I'll just show you the inside of these so you can see how beautifully they turn out. Okay, so the cookies are dry. I've got my beautiful tree behind me. I've got my dogs sound asleep. I don't know if you can see Walter over there in the chair. <laughs> And it is the perfect time to have some afternoon tea. Oh, so very good. And let's have some of these cookies. I put them on this really cute Christmas plate, <laughs> but you can see we've got our Christmas trees and our Santa hats. Again, are they picture perfect? No, but they're gonna taste amazing. So I have chosen one of our Santa hats and let's break it open first so you guys can see what the, <sighs> what the inside looks like. Just layers and layers, nothing but good, real food in these cookies, no preservatives, nothing that's gonna make anybody not be healthy. I mean, except for the sugar, but it's the holidays. So there you go. So let's give it a try. So, so good. So not only do these cookies look amazing, they also taste amazing. Now what I'm gonna do, hmm, I am not going to put the entire recipe down in the description box, but what I will do is give you the link to the food blogger that originally did the recipe. I wanna make sure she gets the traffic. I've been using this recipe for the last maybe three years, absolutely loved it. So head over to her website for all of the detailed instructions. I am not a gourmet cook, but if you guys want to see more cooking videos from me, let me know. They're a lot of fun to film. And yeah, I hope whatever you're doing, you're finding joy. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do so and hit those big bell notifications so that you don't miss a thing. And if you wanna know how you can support the channel, there's information on that in the description box below as well. Have a great day, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you next time. So good. Tomorrow. Okay, they're just amazing. Bye.